Hi everyone, one of my primary issues to sort out on the Carrara for its MOT was replacing the tyres, as even though a couple still had good tread, they were showing some bad signs of age cracking. Unsurprising given that the date code revealed they were from 1998, so those had to go, and I replaced them with a set of Uniroyal Rain Expert 3s, an asymmetric tyre that, although not a performance fitment, seems to get good reviews from people, and other than some people saying they can be a little soft, which is hardly the worst issue when a car only weighs three quarters of a ton, I think they'll work nicely. One of the downsides of small wheels nowadays is that the tyres tend towards economy fitments, but the good news is that even branded tyres are a reasonable price, and these cost me less than £50 a piece. Unfortunately, I managed to get a fairly impressive puncture on my daily driver on the exact same day, all the way through the tyre and out the side, so my outlay for tyres was still higher than I planned for. Staying with the wheels, while hardly essential, the scabby wheel nuts and locking nuts were really letting the appearance down, so I picked up some new locking nuts and a set of chrome effect plastic caps to freshen things up easily. If I can in the future I will get the proper wheel nuts actually shined up or re-chromed, but for now this will do the job. While checking the lights on the car, I found I had a duff indicator, as shown by the faster flashing on the other bulbs. Removing the lens, I found that the bulb itself was fine, and the issue was corrosion on the contacts. A quick attack with the Dremel cleaned that up and got the light flashing again, so that was an easy fix, and the brake and reversing lights checked out fine as well, though I did manage to blow a brake light bulb on the way to the MOT, and it turns out that the headlight aim was a little low both easily fixed. All that was left on the lights was to fix the rear fog light, which, although it technically worked, had sheared off its bracket and was totally corroded out internally. So I just spent the £8 required to get a new one, which happened to be both a smaller and neater looking unit to boot. Another electrical job was to swap out the battery, as the one the car came with was both dying and it was the wrong fitment, so it rubbed against the intercooler and the hold down clamp wouldn't fit over it. With the two batteries together you can really see the difference in size, and it definitely fits better in the engine bay, which is good because now I can clamp it down like it should be, because it does the battery no favours if it's rattling around and your MOT tester may not take too kindly to it either. I also put some Vaseline on the contacts just to keep the corrosion at bay a bit. The battery itself is a Bosch one, and as it happens, it's identical to the one fitted to my cappuccino. Next up, the wiper arms were looking rather tired, so I gave those a freshen up at the same time as replacing the worn out blades. What I'm doing here is marking the wiper position on the screen with some masking tape, which makes it much easier to get them lined up correctly after taking them off. While the arms are normally just held onto the spindles with nuts, they're one of these things that is usually pretty seized on, and the plastic trim on the Carrara means I can't get in there with the puller tool, so instead a few taps with a small hammer on the spindle help to shock them loose. Interestingly, the wiper arms are marked which side they are, so you can't mix them up because they're different lengths. Anyway, I rubbed down the arms, then gave them a coat of primer, followed by satin black, which will give a nice original looking finish. For the blades, I always go for the Bosch flat aero blades, as I find they're much better than the standard wipers, and they have this very clean design with an enclosed clip over the arm, and it just looks much better. It's the traditional installation being the reverse of removal for putting it all back together, and uh, taking the extra time to clean these up was worth it to me, they look a lot better. Round at the back, I didn't need to redo the wiper arm, so I just swapped on a new blade. I filled the almost completely empty washer fluid to go with having nice new wipers. Uh, this stuff says it's berry scented and they're not joking, it smells properly fruity. Plus, more to the point, it'll actually clean the windscreen. Uh, the rear windscreen actually has its own washer fluid reservoir, which you open a hatch and it's just above the rear light here. The old number plates on the car weren't in great condition, so my last job on the outside is to replace those. 
At the front, although it will mean replacing them when changing the oil filter, I use sticky pads rather than the original screws, as it looks much neater and I just don't like having screws on number plates if I can avoid it. At the back of the car, there was quite a bit of old pad and residue still stuck there from previous plates, which was a bit of a pain to get it all removed, but once that was off, the new plate went on and I was about done. I did take the time while I was working on the car to address a couple of small interior bits, namely fitting the cowl I'd made for the steering column to cover up the gap from the aftermarket steering wheel adapter, and fitting a basic head unit. Obviously, I don't actively need one for getting the car MRT'd, but I'd taken out the old tape deck, and I didn't want to leave it with just a hole in the dash, so for the few minutes it took to install, I decided that I might as well. At that point, with everything working, I took the car off to the MOT test, and it passed, so the car's now road legal again. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time to take the car out for a drive.